good morning everybody so yesterday we were doing with the respiratory tract na so we have given the introduction we have started with the introduction of the the, the, the respiratory system so now and we have also seen the what the respiratory tract or the respiratory system is divided into as such uh, we have told that it is uh, been divided into upper and lower respiratory tract where the upper respiratory tract includes uh, nose nasal cavity sinuses and pharynx the lower respiratory tract includes larynx trachea bronchial tree and the lungs so in that uh, the last class we have covered the nose nasal cavity sinuses and a part of the pharynx was covered it was only a part so let us do it in detail about that of the pharynx so what is the pharynx actually pharynx is already also it is covered but it, a, a little bit just about that of the pharynx as it comes in the respiratory system let's do it again a wrap up of that of the pharynx because it is already recent it has, would have been done in the gid digestive system also but let's see uh, the uh, uh, just of that but pharynx which is related to that of the respiratory system so when we have seen the upper respiratory system as such we have said it includes nose nasal cavity along with that of the sinuses and yes a fibromuscular tube about 10 to 15 cm length yes so this is that of the pharynx so this part which is that of the pharynx when you see the upper part so this part is called as a nasopharynx behind that of the nose it is called as nasopharynx behind the mouth it is called as oropharynx and at the part of the larynx yes it is called as laryngopharynx now when we see each part of the pharynx so this part we call as nasopharynx so this is a nasopharynx which is present behind that of the nasal cavity so when you see the boundaries of the nasopharynx above so this bone is called as a sphenoid bone so it is above it is formed by roof is formed by the sphenoid bone below it is formed by the top the soft palate and posteriorly when you see it the posteriorly it is formed by the top the vertebrae along with the top the prevertebral fascia with the vertebral muscles when you see anteriorly it is formed by the cone what you are seeing as these are the top the conche are which are present so these are the boundaries means when you are saying nasopharynx the nasopharynx extends from the sphenoid bone are the basi occiput so this is part which is called as a sphenoid bone up to that of the soft palate so this region behind the nose is called as that of the nasopharynx next coming to the oropharynx so what is oropharynx so behind the mouth the pharyngeal tube or a fibromuscular tube what you are seeing is called as that of the oropharynx so this is what you are seeing the oropharynx the oropharynx extends from above again it is a soft palate below what you are seeing is a epiglottis so this is a part which you are seeing the epiglottis again if you see behind it is the pretrabial fascia that is the fascia which is covering the vertebrae so at this part what it includes is uh, wait for sorry yeah, yes so at this part behind that of the mouth what you are seeing so this is that of the pharynx it is called as that of the oropharynx so when you come across a laryngopharynx so this is a larynx are the voice box so that you are seeing so at the part this part this uh, fibromuscular tube which is present is called as a laryngopharynx do re remember the pharynx continues downwards as that of the esophagus so it is continue as that of the mouth uh, tube which is called as that of the esophagus so when you are seeing the muscles of that of the pharynx a, a little bit about the muscles of the pharynx what these muscles of the because we say whole of the pharynx is a fibromuscular tube means fibromuscular means it is made up of some muscles the muscles 
which are the uh, pharynx is made up of is superior constrictor so this is the muscles what you are seeing this is a superior constrictor muscles this is a middle constrictor muscles and this would be the inferior muscles constrictor muscles all coming and forming as a median raphe other than that there are also some longitudinal muscles such as stylopharyngeus palatopharyngeus so these are all the longitudinal muscles so all other than constrictors there are also some longitudinal muscles which are forming as that of the fibromuscular tube when you see the arterial supply of that of the pharynx so this is what you can see it is a pharyngeal artery this is forming the pharyngeal artery so the pharyngeal artery which is supplying that of the pharynx along with its vein now you can see here the pharynx so this is was the nasopharynx this is the oropharynx this is the laryngopharynx which is continuing below downwards as that of the esophagus so this is what it is continuous so the only thing that you need to do it is uh, because this was already covered so i have only given a gist so what is the pharynx what are the types what is the division of the of the pharynx so that as naso oro and laryngo it is a fibromuscular tube so what you are seeing is a fibromuscular tube which is extending from that of the sphenoid bone to that of the cartilage that is a laryngeal cartilage it will be extending so this fibromuscular tube is about 10 to 15 cm in length made up of some constrictor muscles and the longitudinal muscle the most important thing that you need at this part is you have to know that as pharynx continues below downwards as that of the esophagus so this is what you will be seeing yes so after the pharynx so in that way what we have completed up till now is the upper respiratory tract so what are the structures we have seen that is a nose nasal cavity sinuses and pharynx so we have seen all the uh, parts in detail we have, seen, we have studied about the nose nasal cavity not only in the respiratory system even in the special senses also we have done it along with the sinuses yes it now we have done with the pharynx now let's start the class with that of the lower respiratory tract so what does the lower respiratory tract includes the lower respiratory tract as such earlier also we have said it includes larynx trachea bronchial tree and the lungs so let's start with that of the larynx so what is that of the larynx is so what you are seeing so this structure is that of the larynx it is made up of some cartilages membranes are present and also some muscles are present so this is that of the larynx what you are seeing when you see the situation and extent that is a morphology of the larynx from way to way in the neck it is present and what is the situation of the larynx it is also called as voice box so larynx itself is a voice box so it is situated it lies in the anterior midline of the neck so when you see in the neck so this is the mid anterior midline in the neck so this part is the neck so the larynx is present at the anterior midline of the of the neck so what you are seeing so this part you can come across to the larynx so this is the larynx which is present in the anterior and the midline of the of the neck it lies opposite to that of the c3 to c6 cervical vertebrae when you see in means it is at the level of c3 to c6 but do remember in females uh, the level of it is above c2 or c1 it will be c2 because a little bit higher in females and also in children because of the voice there is also change in the voice also but in men when you see it is lies opposite to c3 this is a cervical vertebrae opposite to c3 and c6 cervical vertebrae it will be presenting and so but in case of females when you see in the females in the females it lies a little bit higher even in children also when you see the larynx lies a little bit higher than the normal but when you say in the situation the situation of the larynx in the neck in the neck is a midline extending opposite to c3 cervical vertebrae to that of the c6 vertebrae yes next uh, yes, as we have said, el, the, the level is in females and children, a mild variation is present a little bit higher in females and in children. 
in infants between 6 to 12 months of age the tip of the epiglottis is little above the level of fibrocartilage and between the odontoid process and the body of the axis so when you see even in that of the infants also it lies when you are seeing this, this is the tip of the epiglottis this is the tip of the epiglottis it is lies at that of the odontoid process so it lies a little bit higher level so then uh, what you have to remember is the situation is very in men in female and even in that of the infant case but all that what you are seeing it is midline in the neck only opposite to the vertebrae cervical vertebrae but the a mild variation is present in in the individuals varying from male to female and to that of the infants yes so when you see that variation what is that so when you have seen now we have seen the changes in that of the situation in males and females but let us see what is the length of the larynx in male and length in the females the length in males is it is about 44 mm in males in females it is about 36 mm you can see even the length is also varied when you see the diameters uh, transverse diameter you can see here it is about 43 and when you see in females it is about 41 and when you see the anterior posterior diameter of the larynx in case of male it is 36 millimeters when you say in females it is 26 when you see the circumference 136 in case of males and 112 in female all in all the remembering thing that here is uh, so there is a variation it is not unique it is not the same what length uh, uh, are when you are seeing the situation also the situation is also differing the situation of the larynx is from c3 to c6 in males same way when you see in females also there is a variation it will be a little bit above the vertebrae is above so there is a variation not only in the situation even in that of the measurements when you see the other larynx even in the measurements such as length diameter even in that also it is very one more thing eh? until puberty there is a little difference between male and female up to that of your female after that there is a wide difference is there after the puberty but up to that of the puberty there is only a little difference between the male and female larynx after the puberty when you see it the male larynx undergoes they will be increased means all the cart because when you see the cart uh, constituent of the larynx it is made up of some cartilages so the all the cart in case of males when you are seeing after the puberty it there will be a uh, prominent increase in that of the cartilages such as that of your thyroid cartilage becomes prominent when you see in males also when you are seeing the adam's apple you can see the thyroid cartilage is more prominent in the midline of the neck so that is a variation when you are seeing so in that way also you can see um, the variation in that of the measurements so up to the puberty uh, there is only a mild differentiation not so uh, so differentiating features that what measurements we have spoken up till now but when you see after the puberty after the puberty yes after the puberty the male larynx undergoes con considerable increase in size as because when you are seeing the cartilages there will be a prominent increase in the size that is very prominent when you are seeing after the puberty if you are observing a male, male person you can see a prominent midline structure that is a cartilage thyroid cartilage can be seen that is Adam's apple what we are seeing so with this we can say there is, there is a differentiation in that of the dimensions of the male and female in case of that of the larynx yes so that is about the uh, situation and the uh, changes in the dimensions now coming to the other constituents of the larynx what larynx is made up of what are the things that larynx is made so larynx is made up of some cartilages say some muscles say some ligaments all all these contribute for the formation of this voice box so these cartilages are about nine cartilages are present in which three are paid cartilages and three are unpaid cartilages next there are also some muscles so these muscles so some are extrinsic muscles some are intrinsic muscles there is only one extrinsic muscle but many are all others are the intrinsic muscles so these about they contribute about eight muscles all together extrinsic and intrinsic so these are the muscles which are also contributing in the formation of the larynx other than that there are some ligaments which are present so all the cartilages muscles and ligaments together all this constitute to form the organ that is a larynx yes as such we have said 
larynx is when you are seeing when you see the uh, contributions cartilages are there muscles are there ligaments are there at your level we will be seeing the each one but up to your extent so what is it is needed not so deep or not so superficial but we will be seeing whatever it is needed part so first coming to the cartilages as we have said the cartilages are above nine in which there are paid and unpaid cartilages the unpaid cartilages are thyroid cartilage cricoid cartilage and epiglottis so these are the three unpaid cartilages and the three paid cartilages are i think you do understand what is paid and unpaid there are two paid are means two so the three paid cartilages are arytenoid cartilages conniculate cartilage and cuneiform cartilage so in this way so because these are three paid cartilages it contributes six plus three that is nine in this way these nine cartilages are the cartilages in which some are paid and some are unpaid so do you remember the unpaid cartilages are thyroid cartilage cricoid cartilage epiglottis so these are the unpaid cartilages the three paired cartilages are arytenoid conniculate and cuneiform cartilages are the paired cartilages the one thing that you have to see is thyroid cricoid and arytenoid are highly made they ossify after 25 years of age but other cartilages when you see they are elastic in nature so when you see the thyroid cartilage cricoid cartilage and arytenoid cartilage they are made up of the hyaline cartilage so they all ossify after the 25 years of age but the other cartilages are all elastic means conniculate cuneiform and that of the epiglottis these are all the elastic cartilage they do not ossify so this is the one thing that you have to bear in the mind yes hyaline cartilage is thyroid cricoid and arytenoid are made up of hyaline they ossify at the age about 25 but the other cartilage they do not ossify because they are all made up of elastic cartilage yes so as such we have said there are three paid cartilages and three unpaid cartilages so the unpaid cartilage we have said so this is the epiglottisma so this is the epiglottis what you have seen the leaf like epiglottis one more is the unpaid is cricoid cartilage so this part what you are seeing is a cricoid cartilage and this is a thyroid cartilage so epiglottis thyroid and cricoid these are the unpaid cartilages of the larynx so when you see in the front view of the larynx that is anterior view so you can see the unpaid cartilage in this way this is a posterior view of the larynx this is the anterior view of the larynx so when you are seeing the anterior view you can see only the, this part of the epiglottis the leaf like shape the yes so this is the epiglottis thyroid cartilage cricoid cartilage these are unpaid cartilages so other than that we have said there are some paid cartilages also which constitutes that of the larynx so this is the arytenoid cartilage you can see two these are the two arytenoids cartilage other than that yes these are the small round like structures which are called as conuclate and the cuneiform cartilage again and this is a posterior view of the larynx so when it is in the posterior view only you can come across but you can see within the fold only so this is a conuclate and the cuneiform cartilages so these you can see on either side Yes, this is arytenoid and this is a conniculate and these are the cuneiform cartilages. So, these are paid cartilage. I think now you understand why these are paid. So, you can see on either side. So, these are paid cartilages. These are unpaid cartilages. That is epiglottis, cricoid and thyroid cartilages are unpaid cartilage. So, with this, these three, these nine cartilages, they constitute a part of the, of the larynx. So, when you see each one what is how it is there so what is the shape what is the angulation what how it is present so first starts with that of the thyroid cartilage see here how the thyroid cartilage looks like so this is how it is present yes when you see the thing what it is uh, how it is look like so thyroid cartilage is like a shield shaped yes when you are seeing it's like butterfly it is shield like shaped Yes, open posteriorly. So this is the anterior view. This is the posterior view. It is open posteriorly, but it is angulated. There is some angle at this part. So this is the angulated part. When you see it anteriorly, it is angulated. 
Posteriorly, it is open, shield-like, and it is angulated in the upper parts. So anteriorly, it is an angulated. And one more thing, the important thing in the thyroid cartilage is it is the largest cartilage of the larynx. If you have come across a paid and unpaid, in which you have seen the unpaid cartilages are thyroid cartilage, cricoid cartilage, and epiglottis. You have also come across that of your paid such as arytenoid, coniplate, and cuneiform. Among all these cartilages, this is the thyroid cartilage is the largest cartilage of the of the larynx. Next, we have said there is angulation anteriorly. Anteriorly, the thyroid cartilage shows some angulation. Yes, in case of males, it is about 90 degrees. The angulation is. Yeah, I think in this picture you can see. So this is the angulation. In males, it is about 90 degrees. But in females, the angulation is little bit more. It is about 120 degrees. The voice also is differing. Yes, it is 120 degrees in case of that of the females. But in males, it is about 90 degrees. Now. Yes, what is the function of the thyroid cartilage? The thyroid cartilage, it is provides attachment to that of the vocal cords. Its function is to shield the larynx from that of the injury and means it protects the larynx from the injury and provides attachment to that of the vocal cords. So, this is the function of the of the thyroid cartilage. So, you can see here as such what we have discussed up till now. Thyroid cartilage is shield-like. You can see that shield. One more we have said anteriorly it has some angulation. When you see this angulation is differing from male and the female. In males it is about 90 degrees you can see. It. In females it is about 120 degrees. And the one more thing the important thing is this is about the largest cartilages what you can come across among all the cartilage. And one more so this is the laryngeal prominence what you call in the normal local colonial language as Adam's apple. Yes this is the Adam's apple which is more prominent when you have said even in the dimensions also males uh, larynx grows faster after the puberty than the females. Yes this is more prominent after the puberty you can see that um, that prominent feature when the person is when you are seeing the neck of the person of the male yes that is the laryngeal prominence it is seen. So this is the thyroid cartilage which is uh, which is you are seeing it so this part this is a superior horn inferior horn this is the angulation this part is called as a laryngeal prominence yes after that of the thyroid cartilage let's see one more that of the unpaid cartilage that is a cricoid cartilage so this cartilage what you are seeing is a cricoid cartilage this is the thyroid man. this is butterfly like what we have just now so this is the Cricoid cartilage which is like a signet ring, ring what we are wearing as that of the finger ring. Same way it looks like, it looks like that ring. So it is signet ring shaped. So this is a ring shaped cartilage which is called as that of the cricoid cartilage. If the thyroid cartilage, the, the main important feature in the thyroid cartilage was it is a one of the largest or the bigger cartilages than any other cartilages of the, of the larynx. But when you see the cricoid cartilage, the cricoid cartilage, the peculiar feature is it is a stronger than that of the thyroid cartilage. It is a stronger, you can see here, yes, it is signet ring in shape and this is stronger. When you see the cricoid cartilage, it is stronger than that of the thyroid cartilage. And one more thing, when you see the anterior and posterior, when you are seeing the cricoid cartilage, this is the anterior view of the cricoid cartilage, the ring. This is the posterior view of the cricoid cartilage. The anterior part consists of an arch. So, what you are seeing, the anterior is narrow, which is consists of an arch. When you go back posteriorly and see, it consists of a broad posterior part. These are called as laminae. The anterior part is narrow, whereas the posterior part is broad, having that of the laminae. So, this is the Thricoid cartilage, this is the strongest, a stronger cartilage than that of the thyroid cartilage, constituting the narrow anterior part that is R and the broad posterior part which is called as lamina. Yes, so you can see here, this is a complete ring. What did you are seeing? Uh, this ring cricoid uh, cartilage, you can see anteriorly, it is the arch of the cricoid cartilage. Posteriorly, which is broad as such we have told, yes, this is a laminae of the cricoid cartilage. In the posterior view, you can see the laminae. So, this is a laminae of the cricoid cartilage. Yes. The Continuing that one, so we have said the unpaid cartilages as thyroid cartilage, 
cricoid cartilage and the one more the last cartilage is that of the epiglottis so what is the feature of the epiglottis how it looks like when you are seeing the epiglottis so this is the epiglottis the epiglottis is leaf shaped so this is epiglottis which is leaf shaped so and remember this is the posterior view when you see in the anterior you can't see the shape very very in this way as a leaf part only the upper part you can see it so this is a leaf shaped cartilage which is attached to the posterior to the root of the tongue posterior to the root of the tongue the epiglottis is attached and the shape of the epiglottis is the leaf shaped cartilage you can see that it is connected to the epiglottis is connected so this is the hyoid bone so this is what you are seeing is the hyoid bone so it is connected to the hyoid bone posterior lead to the hyoid bone and that of the thyroid cartilage by means of a membranes but it is connected on the posteriorly it is connected to the hyoid bone and that of the thyroid cartilage yes going to the epiglottis the thin leaf shaped structure which is situated in the midline it consists of the upper free end so this is the leaf part you can see the upper free end and the narrow and the broad and the rounded up below part and the lower part it is a narrow part so upper is a free end which is broad and the narrower at the top the lower part when you see the shape it is spoon shaped and prevents aspiration by covering the opening of the larynx during swallowing so when you are swallowing that of the food it prevents moves back and prevents of the aspiration whenever the liquid is coming it prevents because when you when the liquid has gone into the larynx larynx is a voice box so this epiglottis prevents from choking any food if it has come out it prevents it from the of the aspiration the tongue and the epiglottis both are connected by fold of the mucous membrane both you can see here this is the tongue and this is the uh, root of the tongue and this is that of the epiglottis the both are connected by fold of the mucous membrane it is uh, connected by means of the fold of the of your mucous membrane and the other side they form a vallicula but that is a different part but here what you can see both are connected the thing is that because it is starting from there so both are interconnected by fold of the of the mucous membrane so that is about that of the unpaid cartilages so what we have seen in the unpaid cartilages is we have gone through the thyroid cartilages which is sheet like which is the larger cartilages which is angulated anteriorly and posteriorly open when you have seen the cricoid cartilage do remember cricoid cartilage is like a ring consisting of an arch anteriorly posteriorly is laminate it is stronger than that of the thyroid cartilage and next the last is the last unpaired cartilage is the epiglottis the epiglottis is like a shape of the leaf which is having a broad base and the narrow at the lower part lower part connected to that of the hyoid bone and that of the thyroid cartilage by means of that of the membrane so these are the things that at your point which is very much important now coming to that of the paired cartilages so we have said there are three types of paired cartilage which is arytenoid coniculate and cuneiform so these are the three paired cartilages which are smaller cartilages so arytenoid and coniculates as such we have said earlier only they are made up of a hyaline cartilage whereas cuneiform are uh, is made up of elastic cartilage there are some rod shaped small rod shaped cartilages which are present on the posterior side when you see the anterior you can't see it on the posterior side in the fibromuscular fold you can get to see it the arytenoid and the coniculate cartilages which are made up of a hyaline where as a cuneiform uh, cartilage is made up of the elastic cartilage yes so this is the posterior view ma so this is a posterior view of the larynx you can see the cuneiform two cuneiforms you can see the two conucleate cartilages yes these are the two arytenoid cartilages when you see the arytenoid cartilages you can see here they are pyramidal in shape the arytenoid cartilage is like a pyramidal in shaped yes they have they are at the lower part it is articulating with this cartilage is a cricoid cartilage and the upper part they are articulating with the conucleate cartilage which is a paired so this is a conucleate cartilage 
which is helpful for rotation required permit the movement that is abduction adduction means boys it does the abduction adduction that is vocal cord movements but when you see here the arytenoid cartilage at the lower part it is articulating with that of the cricoid at the upper part it is articulating with the conicoid and these are pyramidal in shape now coming to the conucleate cartilage so this is the conucleate cartilage it is nodule it is like a nodule you can say it is in the fold this fold is called as airy epiglottic fold earlier also i have told you can't see the cartilage as such because they are present in a fold which is called as airy epiglottic fold these are like a nodule if you feel it when you are seeing the dot of your larynx this looks like that of your nodules when you are touching it, it it you are looking as it if it is present in the fold that fold is called as a fibromuscular fold and we are touching it and seeing you are feeling as that of the nodules so these are present in a fold which are called as that of the airy epiglottic fold and these are two cuneiforms which are the paid cartilages these are again small round shaped cartilage which is again present in the fold which is called as that of the airy epiglottic fold so these are the three paired cartilages cuneiform conucleate and arytenoid are the three paired cartilages in which you have to remember that cuneiform is made up of the elastic whereas arytenoid and conucleate are the two cartilages which are made up of hyaline cartilage next coming to the doctor so when we have said the larynx the larynx consists of the of the membrane mem uh, constitutes that of the cartilages there are some membranes there are ligaments so when we have said the upper part of the larynx we have when we have started we have said it is made up of some paid and unpaid cartilages there are some membranes there are some ligaments so coming to that of the membranes and that of the ligaments so what are the membranes the larynx is formed by larynx constitutes one membrane which is called as that of the thyrohyoid membrane so this is the thyrohyoid membrane which is present the meaning itself you can get it links larynx to that of the hyoid bone so when you are seeing so this is that of the hyoid bone greater and the lesser palm of the hyoid bone here the membrane what you are seeing is the thyrohyoid it is extending from the thyroid cartilage to that of the hyoid bone so this membrane is called as that of the thyrohyoid membrane you can see at the middle part it is thickened and forming as a ligament which is called as median thyrohyoid ligament so at the median part this hyoid membrane which is thyro that is thyrohyoid membrane is thickened to form a ligament which is called as median thyrohyoid ligament one more membrane the other membrane is crico thyroid membrane this was between a thyroid and that of the hyoid bone so the membrane is called as thyrohyoid membrane coming here this is the cricoid cartilage by now you came to know it then and and this is that of the thyroid so here the membrane which is called as crico thyroid it is extending from cricoid cartilage to that of the thyroid cartilage and you can see even in the crico thyroid membrane also at the median part of the crico thyroid membrane it is thickened and forms a ligament which is called as median crico thyroid ligament so this is a median crico thyroid ligament one more between the cricoid cartilage and that of your trachea so this is the tracheal rings yes between the cricoid and the trachea that is the first tracheal ring you can see that of the ligament which is called as crico tracheal ligament so between the cricoid cartilage and the trachea so the ligament which is present is called as crico tracheal ligament so these are the ligaments which hold the larynx which hold the larynx hyoid and trachea so when you are seeing that of the larynx um, uh, when you are seeing the larynx it consists of the hyoid bone which is again constituting of that of your trachea all these larynx uh, hyoid and trachea are held together so if, 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 if when they have to be in a sequence if when they have to be in a sequence so they are held together by these membranes only that is a thyrohyoid membrane crico thyroid membrane and the ligament which is called as crico tracheal ligament so these membranes and the ligaments 
keep that of the larynx in together means in a sequence you can see all together in one so when you are seeing the organ as separately you can't see that of the uh, larynx separately hyoid bone trachea all together they are together in a in a organ forming constituting in a organ you can see the hyoid bone you can see that of the uh, thyroid cartilage you can see the trachea together because all these are held together by these membranes and that of the ligaments yes behind posteriorly so this what the membrane uh, what you have seen that of the anteriorly anteriorly you have seen the thyroid membrane you have seen the cricothyroid membrane and then you can also see that of your median cricothyroid ligament uh, along with the cricotracheal ligament and median thyroid ligament so when you go posterior side behind what you look after there is a ligament there is a membrane there which is called as quadrangular membrane so this membrane is called as a quadrangular membrane which links to the arytenoid to that of the epiglottis so this is the arytenoid which is the paired cartilage which is linking this is a membrane which attaches that of the arytenoid cartilage to that of the epiglottis by means of a membrane which is called as that of the quadrangular membrane so posteriorly the membrane is quadrangular membrane when you see the anteriorly it is a thyroid cricothyroid and in along with the ligaments that is cricotracheal median cricothyroid and median thyroid ligaments yes when you see this quadrangular membrane so this is a quadrangular membrane which connects the epiglottis to the top here arytenoid cartilage so this is what your elastic membrane this is a quadrangular membrane which is a elastic membrane which contribute to support the area epiglottic and the ventricular folds so it is helpful for that membrane is helpful to support the area epiglottic and that of the ventricular folds yes other than that there are some functional ligaments so when we have said we here we came across some ligaments such as thyroid membrane cricothyroid membrane so other than this there is also one more ligament which is called as conus elasticus so this is helpful for sound production that is rima glotta it is closer closing and opening whenever there is a part so this is helpful for there is one more functional ligament so this ligament is function which is called as conus elasticus so this is a conus elasticus this is a ligament which is helpful the main function is vibration that is sound production and closing and opening opening that is rima glotta it is there is present when you see the interior of the larynx you will come across here i would be saying only a part of what it is needed for you but you have to remember there is one more ligament which is called as conus elasticus uh, which is helpful for sound production production of the sound it is helpful yes so when you go now with this when you are going to the this is the external feature when you are seeing the interior of the larynx so when you open and see when the larynx when you are seeing interiorly what it consists of so we can see the vocal folds these are the top your vocal or the vestibular folds which are dividing whole of the larynx into the parts so these parts are along the top your vestibule above the vestibule it is called as that of the inlet or above the vocal folds so this is called as superior vestibule this part is that of your supraglottis or ventricle or the sinus of the larynx and this is called as subglottic part so in this way the interior of the larynx is divided into the some parts so you can see the vestibular part yes next is that of the sinus of the larynx next subglottic part how this division is present the when you are seeing this division so this is part what you are seeing this is a vestibular fold and this is a vocal fold so this fold when you are seeing so this is a vestibular above the vestibular fold this is the inlet of the top of the vocal fold which is called as vestibular fold or it is also called superior vestibule or glottis part so this is a supra glottis the glottis part of the of the larynx so larynx interiorly it is divided to glottis next between the vestibular and that of the vocal fold so this fold is a vestibular fold and this is a focal fold this space is called as a ventricle or the sinus of the larynx or laryngeal sinus we say which is called as a sinus of that of the larynx the area between that of the vestibular fold and that of the vocal fold beneath the vocal fold it is called as subglottis part 
so because of these two folds vestibular fold and the vocal fold the interior of the larynx is divided into the upper part is called as vestibule part so upper part is called as a superior vestibule part the in between the two folds vestibular fold and the vocal fold this is called as ventricle or the sinus of the larynx beneath it is called as subglottis part yes i think you have understood vestibule or superior vestibule sinus of the larynx and subglottis part so this is the interior and the cavity of the larynx which is divided into the top of three by means of two folds that is vestibular fold and the vocal fold which is dividing the interior of the larynx into upper part which is called vestibule part in between the two folds it is called as a sinus beneath that of the vocal fold it is called as subglottis part yes now coming to the musculature of the of the larynx what the larynx is made up of what are the muscles which of which larynx is co contributed the larynx is associated with two groups of muscles there are some extrinsic muscles there are some intrinsic muscles but the extrinsic muscle is only one but the most of the muscles what you are seeing is the intrinsic muscles which have the major contribution all the intrinsic most of the muscles are that of the intrinsic only which are helpful which are helpful for that of the main function so the main functions of this laryngeal muscle is regulation means it regulates the tension of the vocal folds so we have seen here so when you are seeing here these are the vocal folds yes these are the two vestibular fold and another vocal fold so the tension is regulated by these of the of the laryngeal muscle and it is also helpful for one set of the muscles is helpful for that of the regulation of that of the vocal folds other set of that of the muscles are helpful for opening and the closing of the glottis opening and the closing of the glottis is also done by that of the intrinsic laryngeal muscles so when you have seen here the laryngeal muscles of two intrinsic muscles extrinsic muscles these two sets have two different function one group but that one group of muscles are helpful for the regulation of that of the vocal cords and the vocal folds not vocal cords we have to say as a vocal folds it is helpful for the regulation the tension of the vocal folds other set of that is helpful for the opening and the closing of that of the glottis so those involved with the vocal folds those set of the muscles which are involved in the regulation of the vocal folds insert upon the thyroid arytenoid and the corniculate cartilage means when you are seeing when you are studying about a muscle we say the muscles are cricothyroid muscle so when you are saying it there is some origin insertion and its action is there so when you are saying the muscles which are involved in that of the vocal fold means the regulation of that of your vocal fold all are inserted either on that of your thyroid cartilage or the arytenoid cartilage or the corniculate cartilages which are present the opening or the closing of the glottis so there is other also other set of the muscles which are helpful aiding for that of the opening and the closing of that of the glottis so these muscles are helpful for the rotational movements so they are helpful for the rotational movements so with this intrinsic muscles you can with this intrinsic and extrinsic muscles you can say what are the muscles which are helpful for what so we, as such we have said that two groups intrinsic and extrinsic one is helpful for the regulation of the vocal fold one set of the muscles are helpful for the opening and the close of the of the glottis part so with this sir, let us see what we have said up till now we are saying there are two sets of the muscle one is helpful for that of the regulation and one is helpful for the opening and the closing so coming to the intrinsic muscles and the extrinsic muscles of the um, larynx are so when you are seeing so these are the muscles cricothyroid posterior cricoarytenoid lateral cricoarytenoid transverse oblique area polyglottis vocalis so other than that extrinsic stenothyroid thyrohyoid inferior other than that the only extrinsic muscle that you can see is that of your thyrohyoid muscle which is the only the muscle we say other than that there are also some other muscles that is stenothyroid but the most important thing coming to the larynx is it is that of your thyrohyoid muscles so these are the muscles of that of your larynx which are divided into two sets that is intrinsic and that of the extrinsic muscles so when you see the extrinsic muscles the only extrinsic muscles that we have said is that of your hyoid that is what you are seeing is that a thyrohyoid which is helpful for elevation of that of the larynx so this is a 
thyroid muscle which is helpful for that of the elevation of that of the nerves the other all are that of your intrinsic muscles which are helpful for as we have said that is glottis change in the tension of that of your vocal ligaments increasing in the pitch Uh, pitch up uh, pitch of the of the sound opening and the closing of the of the rima so these all the intrinsic muscles are helpful in that way so the main function of whatever we have seen the muscles that is posterior cricoid adenoid lateral transverse oblique all these are helpful for the of your glottis opening and the closing of the of your rima glottis it is helpful these all the intrinsic muscle most they helpful for the of your tension increasing or are controlling the tension are raising the pitch so whole that is controlled by means of this intrinsic muscles of that of your larynx yes ma as such when you are seeing here the only extrinsic muscle what we are seeing is we said there are some extrinsic muscles and some intrinsic muscle so the only extrinsic muscles that you can see here is that of the cricothyroid muscle so this is a cricothyroid muscle which is the extrinsic muscle of the of the larynx so this is a cricothyroid muscle other than that the intrinsic muscles are so when you are seeing here yes the cricothyroid muscle yes the other muscles are when you are seeing so this is a transverse arytenoid muscle this is a transverse arytenoid muscle this is the oblique arytenoid muscles from one arytenoid to other the muscle is going so this is the oblique arytenoid this is a cricoarytenoid this is a cricoarytenoid muscle so this is a aryepiglotticus muscle so these are the muscles which are present to that of the intrinsic muscles of that of the larynx yes now coming to that of the when we are seeing any of the muscle we say what is the function what is the function of the of your blood so the muscles which are acting as when where we are saying the larynx larynx is that of your voice box means some muscles does adduction some muscles does abduction yes so what are the some muscles which are helpful for that of the adduction of the vocal ligaments what are the muscles which are helpful for that of the abduction so when you are seeing the adduction so this is how your larynx the adduction of the vocal ligament is by means of transverse arytenoid muscle so when you have seen here here you came across the arytenoid transverse from one arytenoid to other arytenoid the muscle fibers are going so the main function of this transverse arytenoid is adduction so adduction of the vocal ligaments vocal ligaments are adducted by means of transverse arytenoid muscle next relaxation of the vocal ligaments here it is adduction other than the transverse arytenoid the other muscle which is also helpful for adduction is lateral cricoarytenoid not only transverse arytenoid not only this transverse arytenoid what you are saying the lateral cricoarytenoid is also helpful for that of the adduction of that of the uh, vocal ligaments the muscles which are helpful for that of the shortening of that of the vocal ligaments are thyroarytenoid so thyroarytenoid is a muscle which is helpful for the uh, shortening means relaxation relaxation for the relaxation of that of the vocal ligament the muscle which is helpful is thyroarytenoid is a muscle which is helpful for the relaxation of that of the vocal ligaments so what here you are seeing is this is a arytenoid these are the two so the transversely the muscle fibers are going so these transverse muscle fibers which are going from one arytenoid to other so one arytenoid to that of arytenoid is called as transverse arytenoids which are helpful for adduction adduction of the of the vocal cords next there is lateral cricoarytenoid so this muscle what you are seeing is a lateral cricoarytenoid muscle which is again also helpful for the adduction of that of the vocal cords means transverse arytenoid and lateral arytenoid both are helpful for that of the adduction of the vocal cords whereas a posterior cricoarytenoid so this is a posterior view so the posterior cricoarytenoid is helpful for abduction means closing of the rima glottis or the opening of the rima glottis so when it is adduction it closes when it is abduction it is opening so the posterior cricoarytenoid is helpful for abduction of the of the vocal cords yes this is a posterior cricoarytenoid you can see how it is abducting so this is a abduction of the cricoarytenoid so this is how it is abduction so this is a abductor of the of the larynx yes 
the other muscle that is thyroarytenoid muscle between the thyroid and the arytenoid the muscle is called thyroarytenoid muscle the main function of the muscle is it relaxes the vocal ligaments and it also decreases the pitch of the sound so the pitch of the sound is decreased by means and because it relaxes it is a thyroarytenoid muscle which relaxes and also decreases the vocal ligaments and the pitch is decreased by thyroarytenoid muscle yes when you see here so there are i have kept it not separately so whenever we have said whole that of the larynx is made up of some cartilages membranes ligaments um, and that of your muscles so muscles we have said as extrinsic and intrinsic muscle so whenever we are studying about the muscle we have to study as origin insertion action and the nerve supply so we are here we are seeing the actions what these actions of whole of the larynx which is made up of a muscle what it is doing when you are seeing cricothyroid that muscle is helpful it is acting as a tensor of the, of the vocal cords when you are seeing the thyroarytenoid it relaxes the vocal ligaments and decreases the sound as such we have seen earlier also same way when you are seeing here all these intrinsic muscles uh, these are opening of the of your rema glottalis means posterior cricoarytenoid and the arytenoid is helpful for opening and lateral cricoarytenoids they are helpful for closing so in all in all uh, we can see the tensors we can see the relaxers and we can see the the open the uh, muscles which are helpful for aiding for the of your opening and the closing of the of the glottis now after the extrinsic muscle let's see about the the in uh, after about the intrinsic muscle let's see about the extrinsic muscles of the of your larynx so what are the extrinsic muscles the extrinsic laryngeal muscles are there four strap muscles in that one is very important muscle but others are all in that way so these are the of your these are strap muscles of the of your neck which are contributing as extrinsic laryngeal muscles such as homoiar sternoid thyroid but sternothyroid it is failing but mostly these are the not so well in what these are the strap muscles which are helpful for aiding for the of the as a extrinsic muscle the one important thing here is uh, when you see that of the larynx as such we have said the larynx is located in that of the midline of that of the neck extending from the vertebrae that is c3 to that of your c4 cervical vertebrae but there is a light difference in the males and females in that of your males and females means c3 to c6 in males it is will be extending but in females it will be a little high or a little low it will be present it varies so at two years larynx descends c1 to c4 vertebrae normally but at 2 years the larynx descends inferiorly at 6 years it reaches the adult position between c4 to c7 vertebrae so it lies opposite at the adult part it lies more or less opposite to that of the c4 to the set of the c7 vertebrae yes coming about the little bit about the how the sound is produced how because larynx as such we call it is a, it produces a sound it is a produce it is a sound production or it is also called as at the voice box how this is so air passes through that of the glottis so when you are you are seeing here yes ma'am the air passes through the glottis so when the air is passing it passes through the glottis vibrates the vocal folds and produces a sound waves so whenever we are taking the air that air is passing it is vibrating that of the vocal folds so whatever we have seen let's see here one picture so it is vibrating that part so these vocal folds it vibrates so when the air is entered into the larynx this air vibrates this vocal folds so this air the vibrates its vocal folds and in that way because of that vibration what happens is the sound is produced so in this way because of the vibration of the vocal fold the sound is produced next the pitch of the sound produced uh, one more after the vibration of the vocal fold the sound may may be a little bit high a little bit low also 
the so that the pitch is depending upon the pitch of the sound is produced depends upon the diameter length and tension of the vocal folds so we have seen the two focal vocal folds that is the vestibular fold and that of your beneath part as that of your two folds we have seen where there is a sinus which are present in between the two focal folds so it depends upon that pitch so the pitch of the sound depends upon that of here here you can see the two vocal folds so these are the two so here you can see the two vestibular fold this is one vestibular fold and one more beneath it is called as a vocal fold so the pitch depends upon these two folds the pitch depends upon that of the two that is that of your vestibular fold and the vocal fold whether the sound is high or that of the whether the sound is low that is called as a pitch so that the pitch depends upon that of your two folds so the pitch of the sound is produced depends upon the diameter length and tension of that of the vocal folds okay the tension is controlled by the tension of the sound whatever it may mean some people talk in tension some people talk very relaxedly so the tension is controlled by the contraction of the, of the voluntary muscles so that change the relative position of the thyroid and the arytenoid cartilage so whatever the tension that you when we are speaking the tension is controlled by means of the, of the voluntary muscles so these voluntary muscles are those which are attaching to the, the thyroid cartilages and the arytenoid cartilage. so tension so we have said some when we are saying we have said some muscles are posterior arytenoid these are the tensors of the vocal cord the tension is controlled by means of these voluntary muscles when the distance increases so whenever the distance when we are talking when the distance increases the vocal folds tense and the pitch rises and when the tense distance when we are talking very nearby when we are talking to a person who is very nearby discussing when the distance decreases the vocal folds relax and the pitch also falls so this is one thing that you have and one more thing the children have slender short uh, vocal folds and their voice tend to be high pitched whenever we are seeing in the home also we can see the uh, sound of the touch kids they are at the high pitched why they are high pitched though they are having slender their, their vocal cords they are very slender very short but they are their pitch because the pitch depends upon that of the folds so it depends upon that of your folds that is the two vocal folds so this is a, the one point that you have to how the sound is produced the main point here is how the sound coming to the anatomical point what is that what happens when the air is entering the air is helpful for the vibration first the vibration first after that the sound will be lower high high the pitch of the sound depends upon the pitch is depending upon the diameter length and the tension so that is what it is which is directly related to that of the size of the larynx whatever size we have said whether it might be male whether it might be female we have said earlier only the dimensions so the pitch depends upon the size of the larynx one more the tension because some people are very tense the tension is controlled sorry my wait yes yes, yes. The tension is controlled by the contraction of the voluntary muscles. So there are some voluntary muscles. They 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 control the tension of the of the uh, sound. One more here when you are seeing the distance. Whenever the distance is more, whenever we are saying at the loud, when they are far apart, we can see that of here we can we will raise our voice. That is the pitch raises. The vocal folds tense. Whenever the distance is less, because when we are nearby, when we are murmuring, at that time there is a decrease in that of the vocal folds. Means there is a relax, relax of that of your vocal folds. Yes. One at the part at puberty we said up to the few puberty both male and female when they are seeing the larynx they grow equally after the puberty the male larynx grows faster than that of the female um, you can see that is very prominent by needs a prominence that is a laryngeal prominence that is in by which you can say the male larynx is faster than that of the female so at the puberty the larynx of the male enlarges considerably more than that of the female. First, the next, the two vocal cords of an adult male. When you are seeing in the adult male, the vocal cords of adult male are thicker and they are longer, and they produce and they produce lower tones than those of the of the adult female. So when you are seeing the vocal cords, when you are seeing that of your females, the male voice at some places would be at the low at the lower voice. The two vocal cords of the adult male are thicker. They are thicker and longer. And they produce a low tone, low tones than those of the adult female part. 
one more. The entire larynx is involved in the sound production. What we have said the larynx, the larynx is made up of cartilages, muscles, membranes, ligaments. Yes, sir. all these, all these structures, the entire larynx, so all these all together constitute the larynx. These are helpful for sound production. So the entire larynx is involved in sound production. It is helpful for vibrating and creating of that of your sound. It is a composite sound which is it is made it may which is it's making. So the entire larynx is helpful for that of your sound production. Amplification, echoing of the sound. It is whenever we are seeing it, there is a, uh, you are keeping whenever you are uh, 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 loud pitch when you are sounding, that is echoing of the sound occur. That echoing it is because in that of your pharynx, oral cavity, nasal cavity, and paranasal sinuses, these are also, but you don't think only the larynx, but whenever we are shouting long, there will be echo. At that time, the three sounds hold. That is also by means of not only the larynx. Even you have to remember that is uh, because the eustachian tube is there. That is a nasal cavity, paranasal sinuses. The amplification of the sound. That is the amplification of the sound is also done by all other the other than that of the larynx also nasal cavity, paranasal, and they are also aiding in that of the sound production. Even the voluntary movements. So sound is produced, the air is going, but that sound is articulated. Means whatever you are sound you are producing the sound, it is the articulation is by means of the tips, lips, and the cheeks, which are helpful for the voluntary movements. That sounds are become whatever the sounds are coming, the sounds are in the form of the words. That words, what it is being produced, it is because of the tongues, lips, and cheeks, which act as the accessory organs for the production of the of the sound. Yes. So when you all in all when you are seeing the main function of the larynx. So what is the main function of the larynx here is one is airway. It is helpful for airway protection. One more is it is helpful for generation of the of your pressure, intrathoracic pressure, and for the speech. Like it acts like a, a valve for the of your speech, whether to reduce the voice or whether to increase the voice, whether to increase the pitch of the voice. So in that way, it acts as a valve or as a gate for the of your speech. Other than that, yes, it is the airway protection because air enters into the larynx because of which only? Because of the entrance of the air only, the sound is produced. That sound is in the form of words because of these articulated things, what we are saying, leaves, chicks, um, all these are helpful to form that, uh, that, uh, that part into that of your speech part. These are the key functions of that of the larynx. Yes. What is happening when the air, up till now we have said, yes, that is the air, this air is forming as that of your sound. So, what, what is, because this is a respiration, the chapter itself is respiration, where there is expression and inspiration. So, in the larynx, what is happening when there is expression, what is happening when there is inspiration. So, following the expired air, when the air is expired. As the air is forced out of the lungs, expression, it produces a voice. So, whenever there is expression, don't think when the air has entered that time. So, as the air is forced out of the larynx, when the larynx is letting out the air out, the sound is produces. Next, the loudness or intensity of the voice, whatever the loud, whether, whether the sound is high or with what the intensity of the voice, it depends upon how forcefully the air is coming out, means how forcefully the expired air is coming out. That much force the intensity of the sound is depending. So one thing you have to remember is the expired air is the air which is helpful for the production of the, of the voice. The first thing. One more. Vibration. The expired air, whenever the air is expiring out, means it is coming out, that expired air, as such we have said, it is helpful for the production of the voice. It is also helpful for the of the maintaining the loudness and the intensity. This causes, whenever it is maintaining the loudness and intensity, what it is causing is, it causes a vibration of the, of the vocal cords, the expired air causes vibration of the vocal cords because of the pitch of the voice depends or 
by which it is controlling that of your pitch so whatever the air how forcefully it is coming as we have said earlier it the voice also depends on pitch depends upon that one so the vibration the because the whenever the vibration is happening because of it the pitch of the voice depends upon the rate of that of the vibration of the vocal cords yes one more there is a resonation as such there are some resonance such as nose lips these all vocal cords they act as a resonators or column of aids which are responsible for resonation the last but not the least part is articulation thus as such the expired air do remember it is the expired air which is helpful for the production of the sound or the intensity of the sound is because of that of your vibration but the sound is generated in the form of the words whatever we are saying speaking we are speaking in the words so that words the articulation is by means of these organs such as palate tongue teeth and lips so these are all helpful for that of the articulation of that of your sound so sound articulation so these are all the articulatory organs which are forming the expired aid what the sound is coming into the words by means of palate tongue and teeth these are helpful for the yes now coming to that of the vasculature of the larynx larynx the blood supply of the larynx you can see here so this is what you are seeing the larynx you can see here the, all the paid and unpaid cartilages that is the epiglottis thyroid cartilage yes so this is a posterior view main arterial supply means above the vocal folds and below the vocal folds there is some difference in that of the arterial supply above it is formed by means of the supply is by superior laryngeal artery a, which is the branch of the um, thyroid artery below the vocal folds it is the arterial supply <coughs> is by inferior laryngeal arteries so the laryngeal arteries are the arteries which are supplying that of the arterial supply above and below it is superior laryngeal and inferior laryngeal which are the branches of the thyroid artery <coughs> so, next nerves which are as such we have said same way above and below the vocal cords also there is a demarcation the superior laryngeal nerve this is a superior laryngeal nerve what you are seeing so this is a superior laryngeal nerve which is dividing into internal laryngeal nerve and that of the external laryngeal nerve so this is a internal and this is a external laryngeal nerve the superior laryngeal nerve it is dividing into internal and external the internal laryngeal nerve it is supplying above the vocal folds now uh, earlier in that of the slide we have seen the focal folds which are dividing whole of that of the interior of the larynx into superior vestibule part next is the sinus part next glottis part we have seen it so the upper part that is uh, supplied by the of your internal laryngeal nerve which is supplying that of internal laryngeal nerve supplies the sensory to that of larynx which is above the vocal folds it is supplied by superior laryngeal nerve the external laryngeal nerve is only the laryngeal nerve which is supplying to the extrinsic muscle only the one muscle that is cricothyroid muscle is a muscle which is supplied by the external laryngeal nerve one more the nerve supply of the larynx is one more is a recurrent laryngeal nerve which is also sensory which is the recurrent laryngeal nerve is a nerve which is supplying below the vocal cords that is the vocal folds below it is supplied by the recurrent above it is supplied by internal laryngeal nerve not only this recurrent laryngeal nerve below the vocal fold that is the two focal folds which is supplying it is also supplying all the muscles except that one extrinsic muscle that is cricothyroid muscle all other muscles are supplied by of the recurrent laryngeal nerve. Coming to the lymphatic drainage of the larynx, above the vocal four folds, the uh, whole of the lymph is drained into that of the deep cervical or anterior superior group of deep cervical group of the lymph nodes, whereas below the vocal folds, it is divided, it is drained into that of the posterior inferior group of a deep cervical group or the pretracheal or pre-laryngeal group of the top of lymph. So this is a lymphatic drainage of the top of the larynx. So with that what we have end is that of the uh, lower respiratory tract, 
one part we have done that is that of the larynx so when you are seen here so when you are coming here the main important thing we have spoken very extensively about that of the larynx at your age or your part but the only thing that you need for your part is the only thing that is important have a, a, a little bit winding then we go to the next part but this is a lower respiratory tract so we have started our class first with that of the pharynx we have started but let's see the lower respiratory tract a <coughs> have a review about the lower respiratory tract that is a larynx so what is important for you is what is where it is situated the most important where it is situated larynx it is situated in the midline in the neck the variation it depends varies in the genders whether it might be male female or children so in case of males in the adult males it is up to the level of c4 to c6 or c3 to c6 but coming in females a little bit higher it can be present so that is one point and the one more point it is in the midline in the top of your neck that is the thing one more thing is what is this constituent of the larynx so for you at your level only these things ma what larynx is made up of larynx is made up of some cartilages some muscles and ligaments only if you are doing only with the names also it is okay a little bit if you are writing about that one it's a very very nice thing but we have said extensively you can take it whatever which you for for you it is understood so it is made up of some cartilages some muscles and ligaments so in that cartilages are there are some unpaid and some paid cartilages the unpaid cartilages are thyroid cricoid and epiglottis so this is a thyroid cartilage this is a cricoid cartilage this is a epiglottis these are unpaid if you are seeing it there is no paid these are unpaid cartilages the paid cartilages are arytenoid conucleate and cuneiform are the paid cartilages so if you are seeing here so this is a arytenoid cartilage this is a conucleate cartilage this is a cuneiform cartilage these are all small cartilages these are paid cartilages other than that what you need to do with you have to not write very extensively at your part just a few points about each cartilage at least about the unpaid cartilages because these are very important you have to need to know only few points i think i have highlighted only the few points ma thyroid cartilage cricoid cartilage and epiglottis only a few points that are, that are well understood by means of only diagram so when you are seeing the thyroid cartilage yes this is the largest cartilage of all other in the larynx one more when you are seeing it it is like a shape shield like or like butterfly shape one more thing at the upper part anteriorly it is having an angulation that angulation varies in males and females in males it is about 90 degrees whereas in females it is 120 degrees i think this can be said only by seeing this you are diagram only i think you are seeing we are also saying in the same way by seeing the diagram this point can be said so this is about that of the thyroid only this much is important for you ma at this part next coming to the top of the cricoid cartilage so this is a cricoid cartilage the shape is ring like it consists of anteriorly there is a arch posteriorly it is wide open having the lamina so this is the arch and this is the lamina which is present and this is stronger than that of the thyroid cartilage yes now coming to that of the epiglottis when you are seeing the posterior view the epiglottis is like a leaf like which is broad at the base but narrow at the top the apex part the broad base of the epiglottis is attached to the of the hyoid bone this is the hyoid bone ma it is attached by means of the of their membrane whereas a narrow part is attached to the of the arytenoid cartilages which are the paid cartilages only that much is important it is a thin leaf like broad above narrow below the upper part is attached to the higher hyoid bone the lower part is attached to that of the arytenoid next so those are the few points a few points in the review i have said only the few points that are very important at your part so now coming to the paid cartilages what are the paid laryngeal cartilages the paid cartilages are arytenoid conucleate and cuneiform 
These three are the paid cartilages. When you see the arytenoid cartilage, here it is pyramidal in shape. So, this is arytenoid cartilage which is pyramidal in shape. It is articulating below with the cricoid, above with that of your poniculate. Only this much is enough. When you are saying about the poniculate and cuneiform, both are present in a fold which is called as airy epiglottic fold. So, these are present in that of the airy epiglottic fold. Yes. And one more thing. When you see that of the cuneiform, the cuneiform is the only cartilage which is elastic whereas a poniculate and arytenoid are made up of hyaline cartilage. Other than this paid and unpaid cartilages, the one more thing the larynx constitutes is the membranes and the ligaments. The membranes which you come across in the larynx are one is between the thyroid and the hyoid bone. The membrane is called as thyrohyoid membrane. The membrane in the midway it is thickened and forming a ligament which is called as median thyrohyoid ligament. One more. Between the cricoid cartilage and the thyroid the membrane is called as cricothyroid membrane. At the midway, it is getting thickened and forming a ligament which is called as median cricothyroid ligament. One more. Between the cricoid cartilage and the trachea, the ligament which is present is cricotracheal ligament. So, these membranes and ligaments make that of the larynx constituent to form as together. When you are seeing it, all the structures lie in a straight manner, in a sequential manner because of these membranes and the ligaments which are present. Next. And posteriorly, so this is that of your membranes and ligaments that you have seen in the anterior view. The only ligament which is present in that of your only membrane which is present posteriorly is a quadrangular membrane which is helpful for the your attachment of the of your epiglottis to that of the arytenoid cartilage. So, this is the only the important thing. Other than that, there is also one ligament which is called as conus elasticus which is helpful for that of the sound production and opening and the closing of the of your hemoglottis. So, these are the ligaments. So, up till now we have done with the of the uh, whatever we part as called as that of your paid and unpaid cartilages. We have done with the of your ligaments and that of your membranes. Now, coming to the interior of the before going to the muscles, let us see the interior of the of your larynx. Interior of the larynx means when you cut open and see the larynx inside, what you can see? You can see the two folds that is the vestibular fold and the your vocal fold. Because of these two folds, the interior of the larynx is divided into vestibular part, ventricle part and the subglottis part. It is also called as glottis sinus of the larynx and that of the subglottis part. Because of these two vocal folds, because of these two focal folds, whole of the interior of the larynx is divided into the superior supraglottis part, that is superior vestibule part, superior, supraglottis part and the subglottis part. Next. Coming to the musculature, what are the muscles? So, as such, we have said the muscles there are two intrinsic and extrinsic muscles. The intrinsic and both the two sets of the muscles are helpful in the different functions. These two sets of the muscles are helpful in doing two different functions. One group is helpful for the tension, for regulating the tension. Whenever we are speaking, the tension is controlled by means of one set of the vocal, vocal one set of the tuffier muscle. Other than that, opening and closing of the tuffier glottis is regulated by other ten other set of the of the muscle. So those muscles which are involved in the of your opening, those involved in the vocal fold fold is means tension of the of your vocal folds, so regulation of the tension are all are inserted into the of your thyroid, arytenoid and the coniclate cartilage. And the muscles which are helpful for opening and the closing of the of your glottis are helpful for rotational movements. They are helpful for all that of the rotational movements of the, of the larynx. So, when we are seeing the muscles, these muscles are some extrinsic and intrinsic muscles. So, these are the muscles that is posterior, lateral. For you, all the muscle names are not at all so important. If you can do remember one or two, it is enough. Otherwise, also it holds good. Some muscles, if you can do it. But what is the main function? Why we are take, telling the muscles? Why if you think, why I am telling at your level the muscles? Because... All these are helpful for voice production. 
Some are tensors, some are abductors, some are adductors, some control that of your tension because of which we are seeing. So, the extrinsic muscles, so there are some extrinsic muscles, say some intrinsic muscles which are helpful for controlling that of the tensors. If in that, if you see it, transverse arytenoid is helpful for reduction of that of your vocal ligaments. Same way, lateral cricoarytenoid is also helpful for adduction of the vocal ligaments. Other than that, thyroarytenoid is a muscle which is helpful for relaxation of the, of the vocal ligament. So, these are the adductors or the tensions. When you are seeing it here, the thyroarytenoid, it relaxes that of your vocal ligaments. So, this is a posterior cricoarytenoid is a muscle which is the abductor of the, of the larynx. It abducts the larynx. So, relaxes with the one muscle, the muscle which is helpful for aiding for the relaxation of the top of your larynx is thyroarytenoid muscle is helpful for relaxation also for the decreasing of the pitch is decreased by means of thyroarytenoid muscle. So, these are all the muscles which are intrinsic muscles which are helpful for either for the top of the controlling of the tension either it is acting in the relaxer of the vocal cords opening or closing of the top of your rima glottis. Yes, the extrinsic muscles, these are the only the extrinsic muscles which are only aiding for the top of your functions. Yes, here the one more that is the mechanism of the sound. The most important thing that here is the air that is entering is into the top of the larynx he is forming some vibration. These vibration has helpful for the top of the production of the top of your sound. It depends upon when you are seeing the pitch depends upon the diameter the length and the tension of the top of your vocal cords and the muscles what we have called that is the tension is controlled by means of the top of your muscles that we have discussed still now extrinsic and intrinsic muscles these are helpful for the top of your regulation of the top of your tension next when you are seeing the, uh, the even along with the sound there is also some echoing that echoing of the sound is not only by means of the top of your larynx there are also some other organs which are aiding for it that is oral cavity nasal and the paranasal sinuses which are helpful for the top the echoing of the top of your sound when you are seeing the mechanism the only thing that you have to do is the expired air whenever the air is when you are taking in that is inspiration when you are letting it out it is called as expression the expired air is helpful for the top of your production of the top of your sound it is helpful whenever the air how how fast the air is coming out that much the pitch is the pitch of the sound also varies in that way so the pitch of the sound depends upon that of the the expired air not only that the vibration of the vocal cord when the air is coming very fast the vibration is more the sound is more so in that way the, the sound depends upon the expired air the pitch of the expired air how fast now coming to the resonation yes the resonation of the voice is because of the vocal cord nose lips when you are seeing it after the sound when it is the air is coming out the air is not as a air it is like like that of your words that words it is converting into that of your words by means of the palate tongue teeth cheeks these are helpful for that of your uh, uh, modification of the top your air into that of your words this is the arterial and the nerve supply lymphatic drainage. So, only when you are seeing it, ma, only those are the things that you have to keep it in the mind when you are studying the larynx. Don't think larynx is very big. I told you some part of the, of the mechanism of the of voice because it's very important. Most most of you have, should have at least a little bit of the idea. Yes, how no, voice is produced by what means by this larynx is present in the top of your respiratory organ. Why it is considered to be the respiratory organ by which, uh, how the voice is coming out. Yes. Coming into the top of your next organ of the lower respiratory tract. We said the lower respiratory tract includes larynx, trachea, bronchi and the lungs. So, let us see about the top of your trachea. So, what is this trachea? As such, in colonial part, colonial language, we say trachea is also called as a wind pipe. Yes, it is a wind pipe. So, what is this wind pipe is? The trachea is a mobile, cartilaginous and membranous tube. It is not a muscular tube. When you are saying esophagus, it is a muscular tube. When you are saying about pharynx, you are saying it is a fibromuscular tube. 
but coming to the trachea don't say it is as a muscular it is a cartilaginous and membranous tube so what you are saying this is it is made up of some cartilage and it is also having a membrane so membrane muscle is also there cartilage is present so it is a cartilaginous and a membranous tube where it begins and where it ends it begins as a continuation of the larynx so when you have done we have started nodes nasal cavity pharynx pharynx continuing as that of the esophagus oropharynx nasopharynx laryngopharynx but larynx what it is continuing it begins as a continuation of the larynx at the lower border of the cricoid cartilage from the lower border of the cricoid cartilage from this is a cricoid cartilage ma you can see here now i think by now you might have idea of what is a cricoid cartilage from the lower border of the cricoid cartilage what it is continuing is this membranous and the cartilaginous tube what you are saying as that of the trachea so it begins at the lower border of the cricoid cartilage somewhere at the level of sixth cervical vertebrae from the sixth cervical vertebrae the trachea begins it ends the trachea ends at by dividing into right and left principal bronchi at the level of sternal angle it might be at the level of the fourth or fifth yes the trachea ends by dividing into right and left principal bronchi at the sternal angle this might be at the level of fourth or fifth whatever we can say fourth or fifth thoracic vertebrae opposite to the fourth or fifth thoracic vertebrae but when you are seeing it it is dividing to right and left principal bronchus and it is ending so the starting is at the lower border of the cricoid cartilage the ending is by the division of the top here two bronchus that is the right bronchus and the left bronchus at the level of the sternal angle or which is situated the sternal angle at the level of t4 or t5 thoracic vertebrae yes next in adults the trachea the cornea is cartilaginous rich within the trachea at the site of the tracheal bifurcation when you are seeing at the top here tracheal bifurcation it is like a cartilaginous ring uh, ridge like it is present now coming to that of the in adults what is the size in adults the trachea is about 11.25 cm that is 4 and 1/2 inches long and 1 inch in diameter so when you are seeing the whole trachea which is cartilaginous and the membranous it is about 4 and 1/2 inches is the length that is 11 cm or 12 cm in length and its diameter is about 2 and 1/2 cm in diameter yes we have said the trachea is some is cartilage part and some is a membranous part the cartilage no membranous part it is u shaped cartilage is u shaped of hyaline cartilage embedded within the wall so when you are seeing it you knew it the uh, there is hyaline cartilage there is elastic fiber cartilage fiber elastic cartilage so this trachea is made up of it is u shaped when you take the cut section of the trachea so this is a cut section you have taken here you can say it is a u shape which is made up of a hyaline cartilage so this is a hyaline cartilage so we are said it is cartilaginous and membranous yes the cartilage is the hyaline cartilage which it is it is like a u shape the muscle what it is forming is trachealis muscle which is a smooth muscle which is present at the posterior end so when you are seeing so this is a trachealis muscle which is this is a trachealis muscle which is a smooth muscle which is at present so with this we say trachea is cartilaginous and also muscle membranous so cartilaginous membranous tube which is present the cartilage is a hyaline cartilage which is a u shaped cartilage anteriorly posteriorly it is made up of a smooth muscle which is called as it of the trachealis muscle yes the mucous membrane of the trachea when you see inside the trachea it is lined by the epithelium which is called as pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium with in it within it it consists of pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium because it secretes some mucus because mucus is secreted within the of your cells which are called as that of their go blood cells so when you are taking the section of the of your trachea and seeing it is lined by pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium with goblet cells which secretes that of the mucus so mucus secretions is present within that of the uh, goblet cells so that is a structure of the trachea the only remembering point is that do remember when you are saying here the trachea is cartilaginous and membranous 
cartilage yes it is made up of hyaline cartilage which is u shaped anteriorly membranous yes it is made up of posteriorly by a smooth muscle which is called as trachealis muscle now what are the relations in the neck and what are the relations in the trochanthorax because trachea extends up to there that part uh, in the of your neck and in the of your thorax so and the relations anteriorly is what you are seeing is a skin fascia inferior thyroid left and right brachiocephalic veins so when you are seeing here yes so in the neck when you are seeing so this is a trachea so you can see here the right and left that of your brachiocephalic veins which are present on that of your either side overlapped by that of your muscles anteriorly posteriorly will be that of your recurrent laryngeal nerves laterally are the lobes of that of your thyroid gland so when you are seeing here so this is the trachea laterally is the lobes of that of your thyroid gland in front when you are seeing the anteriorly it is strapped by means your strap muscles posteriorly is that of your recurrent laryngeal vessels recurrent laryngeal vessels will be present this is the relations when you are seeing in that of the neck part when you see the relations in the thorax what is present in the relations in the thorax anteriorly in the thorax the trachea is when you are seeing here so this is a trachea so what is anterior what is posterior and that of your either side anteriorly is a sternum thymus left brachiocephalic and the common carotid vein uh, arteries which are present along with that of the arch of aorta so you can see that of your anteriorly subclavian vessels are present internal jugular vein is there common carotid artery is present that is present anteriorly these are the structures which are related to the trachea in the part of the of the thorax part posteriorly is the esophagus and the left recurrent laryngeal nerve so here also the posterior was in that of the neck also the posteriorly was left recurrent laryngeal nerve same way in the thorax also it is a esophagus with left recurrent laryngeal nerve so it is a esophagus with the nerve is left recurrent laryngeal nerve that is posteriorly which is present next on the right side on the right side the esophagus space and the right vagus nerve with that of your pleura so when you see on the right side it is the esophagus vein with that of the pleura it will be present on the right when you are seeing on that of the left side on the left side that is the arch of aorta with its that left common carotid and the subclavian vessels will be present so on the left side it is a subclavian artery with the top its vessels what you can see its vessels are present so these are the relations of the trachea at the part of the of your thorax now coming to the blood supply of the trachea the upper two third is supplied by inferior thyroid arteries the lower third is supplied by means of bronchial arteries so upper two third of the trachea is supplied by the inferior thyroid but the lower part is supplied by means of the of your bronchial vessels lymphatic drainage the lymph drains into pretracheal paratracheal from there it is draining into deep cervical group of lymph nodes nerve supply yes when you have seen the larynx also it is supplied by recurrent laryngeal nerve and the um, uh, internal laryngeal nerve but coming here even the trachea is also supplied by that of the recurrent the sensory nerve supply is by vagus and that of the recurrent laryngeal nerve whereas sympathetic nerve is a nerve which supplies only the posterior part which is made up of a muscle which is called as a trachealis muscle the sympathetic nerve supply is for the trachealis muscle yes ma so uh, let's have a repetition of the of your trachea which is a wind pipe once uh, so this is the trachea so when you are seeing the trachea the trachea is a cartilaginous and the membranous tubular structure so this uh, trachea what you are seeing is it is cartilaginous and also membranous tube like structure which is made up of so the cartilage by which it is made up of is a hyaline cartilage and the membrane is that of your muscle it is a trachealis muscle when you see the trachea it is extending from lower border of the cricoid cartilage coming down at the level of thoracic vertebra means at the level of t5 or t6 
means at the sternal angle part trachea is divided into right and left principal bronchus it is dividing into that of your right and left principal bronchus the point to be remember is the larynx from the lower border of the cricoid cartilage continuing down as a windpipe are the trachea tube which is called as that of the trachea yes so when we have said the trachea is a cartilaginous and the membranous tube so here when you are seeing is it is having a cartilage anteriorly it is made up of cartilage which is called as a hyaline cartilage posteriorly it is made up of a muscle which is called as a trachealis muscle so in that way you can say that trachea is cartilaginous and also membranous tube when you see the beginning and the ending of the trachea it begins as a continuation of the larynx at the lower border of the trachoid cartilage so from the lower border of the trachoid cartilage to that of the c6 cervical vertebrae at the level of c6 cervical vertebrae means where the larynx, larynx ends means trachoid cartilage ends is at the level of c6 cervical vertebrae at that part it begins and ends at the top of the sternal angle into dividing into two bronchi that is right and the left bronchi which is lying at the level of t4 or t5 thoracic vertebrae next when you see the length of the trachea it is about 11 and a half cm when you see the thickness of the diameter it is about 2 and a half cm in diameter when you see the structure of the trachea the trachea is a u shaped tube having made anteriorly by means of a cartilage posteriorly there is a muscle which is called as trachealis muscle there is a secretion in the trachea because it would be never be dry there it is means there is some goblet cells which are present because of which we can say that interior of the trachea is lined by an epithelium which is called as pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium with goblet cells which secretes mucus in it so this is how ma it looks like this is a c c shaped structure made up of hyaline cartilage anteriorly posteriorly trachealis muscle is present when you see that of the this part the lining histological part it is um, lined by ciliated pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium with goblet cells when you see the relations of the trachea in the neck and in that of the thorax so when you see in the uh, relations in the neck and in the thorax when you are seeing anteriorly when you are seeing here anteriorly in the neck there are some strap muscles like stenothyroid stenohyoid yes thyrohyoid muscles anteriorly posteriorly will be that of your esophagus and current laryngeal nerve next either side laterally will be that of your thyroid gland lateral border of the thyroid gland will be present so this is the thyroid gland which is present so laterally is either side is that of your thyroid gland so same thing whatever here i have seen same they kept it in the same way ma so when you are seeing anteriorly the relations are skin and the fascia next is the inferior thyroid vein jugular arch brachiocephalic vein and the muscles that is tendon of thyroid and tendon of hyoid muscles posteriorly is recurrent laryngeal nerve with the esophagus laterally are the lobes of the thyroid gland so these are the relations in the top of your neck when you go in the thorax the relations are anteriorly will be the top of your brachiocephalic and the common carotid arteries posteriorly again we are seeing that is a esophagus and left recurrent laryngeal nerve whereas on the right side it is a azygous vein and the right vagus nerve and the left side is the arch of aorta with left common carotid left subclavian and the vagus phrenic and the pleura will be present on the of the left side yes when you see the blood supply the blood supply of the trachea upper two third is supplied by inferior thyroid lower third is supplied to the bronchial artery lymph whole of the lymph is drained into deep cervical nerve supply is the sensory nerve supply is by means of recurrent laryngeal nerve whereas sympathetic is by means to it is to the of the trachealis muscle yes ma'am so this ends the class 
so we'll be continuing the other part tomorrow so uh, yes if you are having any doubts regarding the uh, every day i will be asking ma you can you are free to ask yes thank you